important meetings for the church. Uh, when this takes place like this, and like uh, Pastor Jeremy said, it hasn't happened here for a number of years, and uh, it's really a good time to see it happen again because God is raising up a new generation. God's doing great things, and we want to all be a part of it. I want to lay a little bit of foundation in your thinking this uh, this evening just before we begin to minister, and I want to make sure that you know what we're doing is biblical and we have definition for what we're doing in the Word of God. We're not doing anything outside or abnormal to the Word of God. In fact, how many know the Holy Spirit and everything that's done with the Holy Spirit is to be done in decency and in order? And so we believe that even for tonight and what's happening tonight. Let me give you some key verses, and I didn't have a chance to let the folks in the back know for the screens, but let me just read them to you. You're familiar with them. Three key verses. Timothy chapter 4, verse 14 says this. Uh, Paul writing to Timothy, do not, 1 Timothy 2, 4, 14, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying out of hands of the eldership. And then in another verse in 2 Timothy 1, 6, he says to Timothy, he's writing to him as a son, he, uh, he says, therefore, Timothy, I remind you, to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying out of my hands. In other words, Timothy, hands have been laid upon you. Word had come over your life. And now what I'm telling you to do is take that word that came over your life and be stirred once again with the word that came over your life. By the way, can I tell you something? Even in the middle of a presbytery like this and where God is speaking very specifically to those that are being asked to come up and be ministered to, you can receive a word sitting right where you're at. God is no respecter of persons. Come on, amen? Just because there's a set of group, a group of people that are getting ministered to, and maybe even uh, one of the prophets will say, hey, uh, call your name or what, bring it forward. You don't know. But even if that doesn't happen, God is still wanting to speak to you tonight. And so I want you to make sure your ears are tuned clearly to what God is saying over these folks because you can receive something even of their word over your life. And you take it in and say, God, I want some of that right there. I need some of that in my life. Number And then be stirred up that way. Number three verse is this in First uh, in First Timothy 1.18. He says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you wage a good warfare. Now, think about what he's saying there. He's telling him, we're not just putting our hands on your head and prophesying over you to make you feel good and then send you back to your seat, send you back to your home, send you back to business as usual, and you can sort of take another notch and say, oh yeah, I had hands laid on me in 2018, and oh, praise the Lord. He says, no, by this word, you wage a good warfare. In other words, the word is designed to not only impart something to you, it's designed to release you to do something in the kingdom realm. Come on, amen? Oh, come on, amen? amen. Anytime we receive the word, it's not just a word. I mean, even a comfort word, an encouraging word, is designed to do something in us that isn't just internal. It's designed to have an external component to it as well so that it moves us forward. It moves the kingdom forward. Never think selfishly. Come on. Not in the kingdom. Don't think selfishly. This is something that God's given me. He's spoken to me. But I'm to wage a good warfare in the in the in the kingdom of dark against the kingdom of darkness with this word that He's given to me. So that's very very important. So we are going to today uh, and tonight and in the next few days we're going to practice in a very visible and real way one of the six foundation stones found in Hebrews chapter six. And that foundation stone is the laying out of hands. And laying out of hands has been done way before Hebrews was written. It was done, and it was initiated even back way back in the Old Testament. And there seems to be times, particularly in the New Testament church, uh, in the body light of the local church, that prophets and elders would come together, and if it's not done in the local church of elders, uh, uh, local elders of that local church, and that's why we have guys from the outside coming in. 
it would be they would be brought in for a season, for a moment in time, to begin to minister to people in the church. Words would be given, the church would be built up and edified, and things would begin to be produced out of the words that were given. And it was a set moment. And so that's what we're doing here. And uh, uh, in, in, in New Testament, a group of elders laid their hands on an individual or on individuals in a setting that was conducive to bringing forth a prophetic utterance that would include some of these very characteristics or parameters. Listen, prophecy will always include a parameter of edification. The whole purpose of prophetic utterance should be to build up and strengthen the person as a believer and help them to achieve God's purpose in their life. Come on, amen? That's the purpose of God's gift. He wants to build you up. Come on, amen? amen. See, when we get up here, never sometimes nervous about God saying, oh, well, what are they going to say over here? Whatever. Listen, you can never be worried about the Holy Spirit. He's never going to put you down. He may bring a little correction or a mid-course correction, but it's all designed to build you up and make you more than what you think you can be. And that's what it is. It's edification. It's also exhortation. A prophetic word should be one that spurs the believer onward to the mark of the high calling in Christ. Listen, prophetic words, even as you and the audience are listening to them tonight, will often challenge the believer to keep moving forward on the path of the just and to adjust, listen, there's a key word, adjust anything in our lives that would hinder our progress in the Lord. Come on, amen. Pastor David did a remarkable job this morning in our MFI conference of speaking about the need and the call to repentance. Repentance is not a one-time deal. Repentance is an ongoing foundation in our lives that when it is laid, it keeps us always in an exhortation state where we're moving in a progressive way toward the mark of what God has for our lives. And that's what uh, prophecy is going to do tonight. The other thing that prophecy does, it brings comfort. Many know the Holy Spirit says is a comfort. Many people need to know that God is aware of their past. Listen. And that his purposes for them are bigger than the past. And that whatever and regardless of whatever happened to them in the past, they can find the comfort and forgiveness that Jesus can supply. And God's got a plan for their life. Never ever, and I say all that to tell you, don't ever be afraid of allowing the Lord to speak to you in a prophetic way. Listen, you may think he doesn't know, but he knows all about you anyhow. <laughs> There's no secrets with God. He knows about your past, but he doesn't hold your past to you. It's gone, it's forgiven, it's dealt with, it's, it's removed. And he's got a plan, he brings comfort, and he's got a plan to move you from whatever was bad in the past into a new day. And come on, amen. Now you think you multiply that not just by one or by two or by ten or whatever tonight. You multiply that by hundreds and thousands in the church. And when that congregation like that gets a hold of that uh, prophecy and that exhortation and that edification and that comfort, boy, they move up and they move out and watch out what's going to happen. It's a powerful thing what's happening here this weekend. The other thing that prophecy does is two more things. One, it, it serves as a place of giving guidance or commissioning. That's found over in Acts chapter 13, and I won't take the time to read that. But listen, a prophetic word can be especially helpful in confirming the direction that God has placed in one spirit. It can also function well to assist in the understanding concerning the timing of the Lord regarding the path that he has us on. Listen, God's going to bring some words to people tonight. It may happen in an instant. And it may happen and be fulfilled in the next few years. You don't know. But when you hear a word of the Lord, you keep that word tight. You keep that word close to you. You pray over that word. You wait for the day of release. And when release comes, you move into that word. My mother-in-law is a good example of this. In 1948, hands were laid on her in the revival of 1948. I mean, that's that's 70 years ago this year, if, if, uh, if you can imagine. 
and hands were laid on her, and one of the words that came over her life, just this obscure little word in the whole host of the whole of the prophecy was, you will be a mother to many children. Well, she had four kids later, you don't know, that, that wasn't many children, and it was still one of those words that you know it's not happening yet. It wasn't until she was 70 years old, 75 years old, she found herself in Africa starting an orphanage, and now that orphanage is full of children. The prophecy came to pass. All those years later, you just hold on to the prophecy. Come on, amen. And here's the last thing the prophecy does. Prophecy is an impartation of gifts. Evidently, something supernatural takes place when individuals have hands laid on them in this context. By the way, that's why we lay hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit. What is inside of me of the Holy Spirit, I now lay hands on you who have not received, but you're a vessel ready to receive, and I impart into you the Holy Spirit. I breathe into you the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and there's an impartation. But it also happens with gifts. I lay hands on you and impart the gift of faith or impart the gift of prophecy or impart the gift of interpretation or impart any kind of gift that would be listed in the Word of God. And that impartation comes and you're released into a new realm of serving the Lord and serving the body of Christ. It's a powerful thing. While hands in themselves are not particularly special, the Holy Spirit works in association with God-ordained means and something supernatural can be important every time hands are laid out. Impartation is so very important. You know, in a few months, I think about it this way. We're going to have a transition that takes place in this church between one senior, um, uh, senior overseer to the next. You know what's going to happen? It's not just a job change. That's not just a function kind of administrative thing. There's an impartation that's going to take place. We're going to lay hands up and set in and impart and move forward with that impartation. All that God wants to do in the next generation. And praise God, it won't stop with the uh, Pastor Jeremy, but it'll probably go from him to even another generation. And then another generation. Come on, amen. Powerful stuff. And as long as we're on this earth, we get to witness that. Are you kidding me? That's good stuff. Yeah. Now you say, what is our role as observers that are sitting here tonight? And every seat looks like it's full. They've opened up the overflow rooms and everything. Well, let me tell you what you need to do as an observer while others are getting ministered to. Number one, you need to be praying right in your seat. Pray for those that are being ministered to and pray for the prophets. Look at, we don't want obscurity. We don't want um, uh, uh, an obtuse prophetic word. We want an accurate and direct prophetic word over every life. And so even as we're ministering, you pray for us three guys that God speak through them right now. Speak through them. Touch them, Lord. Help them to hear clearly. That you be praying that for us and also be praying for the ones that are being ministered to. Lord, help them to hear the word. Help them to receive the word. Let it go deep into their heart and mind and life. Let it change them, Lord God. Minister to them right now. Everything that they have need of. Blah, blah. And you pray for those. Those are your brothers and sisters getting ministered to. Come on, they're part of this body. They're part of you as a family. And so you need to be praying for them. The second thing you need to do is be a witness. That's why you're here. You're a witness. You know what? I make a big deal when we do weddings because there's a little part in the wedding ceremony that the, uh, those that are witnesses here today, da 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 da, and, uh, and I give a charge to all the congregation at a wedding. I say, you guys out there are watching these two join me, joined in matrimony and your witnesses, and you are not responsible to make sure you enforce, you encourage, you strengthen this marriage, and don't you do anything that will harm this marriage. Come on, amen. You can help as a witness, be a, a witness to make this thing. Well, you're doing the same thing with these that are getting ministered to. Come on. 
you're a witness. <laughs> you know what? If you see them and they're not, well, it sounds real policey like, but I don't mean it that way. But if you see them and they seem to be falling down on the job uh, with the problems in that's going on, you go up to them and say, hey, I witnessed what you were minister to last year. Come on now. <laughs> It's like what Paul did in 2 Timothy. Stir up the gift that's in you. I was there. But I saw it happen. I know what happened. Come on now, Timothy. What are you holding back for? What are you discouraged for? What are you a little depressed about? Come on, Timothy. Hands were laid on you. Word was given over your life. Stir that gift back up again. Come on, amen. I'm a witness. If I come back next 10 years from now... If I'm invited back 10 years from now, <laughs> I'm going to be looking at those that got ministered and they go, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's going on? Well, you know, that was a good word, but I'm going to... Oh, no, 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 no. Stop right there. You get going now. Come on. Stir it up. Okay? You're a witness. Number two, here's what you are. You're a worshiper. Listen, as they're being ministered to, and at the end of each time that we minister, we'll lay our hands on them collectively and pray and seal that word. And I want you and the team's going to help us. You begin to just worship. And let what's being done tonight be done in an atmosphere of worship. Let Jesus be the center and the focus of all that we're doing tonight. And then also, you receive all that God has for you every time a word is given over anyone else. See what you can pull out of nuggets and little things. And it'll you'll be encouraged that way. And then lastly, you'll be challenged by the word tonight here as well. Listen, this is not a word just to challenge these candidates tonight. It's a word to challenge the body of Christ. This is being done. It's not being done in secret. It's not being done on an off night behind closed doors and just a few of us and the leaders are around and all that. And, oh, well, whatever. And praise the Lord and a little activity. This is being done openly in public. And why is that? Because God is not just speaking to these that are coming up on the stage here in the next about or two. He's speaking to the body of Christ here at BFC. Come on, amen. amen. He's talking to us. Come on, that's me. I include myself. He's talking to us at BFC and he's challenging us. So my ears are going to be tuned tonight really good. Lord, what are you saying about the next season in this uh, church history? What are you saying about the next generation? What is happening? What am I hearing? What ministries are being approved? What ministries are being launched and affirmed? What things are going on? What gifts are being released? Oh Lord, I see, oh my, oh my good, oh wow. And all of a sudden you get excited because you see God's about to do something great. Yeah. He's going to challenge us into a new season. Come on, amen? Yeah. He's going to do it. Now here's what I'd like you to do. We're going to get going on ministry. And that's all the explanation you get. The rest receive by faith. <laughs> All right? I want you to stand. I want you to worship with us. And we're going to call those folks up that are going to come first. And the prophets are going to come to the stage. We're going to worship. All right?
brought you to this hour after a time of deep plowing in your life, a time of the preparations of God, as God has been opening up your heart and putting a willingness in your spirit to say, God, be it unto me according to your word. Whatever you ordain, whatever you desire, you have not tried to stipulate to the Lord what you're going to do. You have had a willing servant's heart and said, you put your life before the Lord and said, I am willing to do what you have ordained for me. And the Lord God has raised you up to be a mouthpiece for Him. You have been given a word in season. You have been given even a prophetic mantle that rests upon you and an anointing to speak forth the word of the Lord, to teach people, to lead them into the ways of righteousness and the purpose of God. I am loosing your tongue. I am loosing uh, the anointing upon you. And you are going to be raised up in this house as a great example to stand with the leadership of this place. I see you standing in a place uh, of leadership and with wisdom and understanding. Amen. The spirit of wisdom to rest upon you. The word of knowledge to be in your mouth. To speak uh, with authority. And you shall not move independently of, of the team. For I join you to the team this day. In a manner that you have never been joined before. And you are going to have the uh, ability to flow and to function in the purpose of God. Daughter, I haven't just set you in as a help meet. I've set you in as a vital part of the team. There is a special, special uh, grace that is upon you. There's a gift of mercy that God has given you and uh, a willingness uh, to pour out to people in compassion and in love and in mercy. And out of that, you have a heart of mercy. I just see you uh, weeping with them that weep. I see you with a spirit of counsel being upon you and that anointing to counsel and to minister healing and restoration and life to people. Together, the Lord joins you to the team ministry of this house, and He is causing you to know that uh, your words are not going to fall to the ground. Your words are going to be impactful. Your words are going to be strong. Your words are going to be anointed. And I break off every bit of intimidation off you. In the name of Jesus, everything that's your way, stretch your hand toward Him. We break off every intimidation. We break off every area that would uh, cause you to withdraw and hold back and not allow your gifts to function in the dimension that God has called you to. But uh, He's going to release you into the purposes of God, even this night, a new mantling from God. For I see a tension that's been formed in your uh, lives in the last few years, a tension between one world and another world. I believe God's wanting to come at this season in your life and bring resolve to that tension. Bring resolve to the questions. Bring resolve to the uh, having uh, almost like a one, one foot in, uh, on one side of the line, one foot on the other side of the line. And he's wanting to bring to resolve this day and bring into your hearts a surety that his call is sure. That his call is with purpose. His call is with a whole different system of reward. His call and His anointing and your response to it is with a whole new, uh, uh, with a whole different system of, a, of a economy. And it's just not money, but it's the, the whole understanding of what the kingdom of God represents. And I believe in this season, God's wanting to come along in this hour, come along and break you out of that tension. Break you out of that place where you feel uh, uh, pulled from one direction to the other direction. You know, I'm going to be very sensitive when I say this. I don't know if it's family or if it's work. I, I don't know what it is, and, but I sense that, and I sense that God's giving you a real understanding of what that is. And you know exactly as I speak it what it is in your heart. And I believe as the head of your home, you're going to be able to forcefully and correctly and with a real purpose see that tension broken and make the the uh, the direction that God wants you to go as a couple. You're going to move in the direction that God has for you and when you do, you're going to see great blessing. It's not that your willingness hasn't been very evident in the past. 
You've heard the word already over your life of your faithfulness and what God's done and how He's used you. But if I could say anything to you tonight, I believe the word of the Lord is this, that there is so much more greater level than you've ever known before. There is not only so much more responsibility, so much more ministry, so much more uh, uh, of an expression of giftings, but there's so much more reward than you can believe possible. Because reward is not in the money. It's not all in the money. The reward comes by hearing the well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. The Lord would come to you tonight and settle something deep, deep, deep in your heart. Hmm. That there's not going to be for you a 30-fold or a 60-fold. But for you guys, it's a hundredfold and no more and no less. It's a hundredfold participation. No more and no less. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just thank you for this man. This is, a, this is going to be a great man, God. And I just believe God, you, you're, God is moving away that I can't see you. Like, you, you like, I don't know if I can do this. And you doubted this. But I want to give you some I can'ts from God. God can't stop loving you. God can't stop. He can't, he can't fail you. God can't, he can't stop being around you. God loves you. So I want you to replace the I can't, I can't do this. And you put your trust in the Lord. And don't fear. Don't fear. God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power, a sound mind, a self-discipline. And I want you to rely on him because there's a fire within you. There's a preach within you. There's a teach within you. And God wants you to flow. God wants you to flow with him. God wants you to be in timing with him. God, there's a man, God is placing a mantle on you. Hallelujah. To, to preach the word of God. And he's going to give you such understanding of the word of God. You're going to be able to dive into the scriptures. You're going to be able to articulate what God is truly saying. You're going to be able to relay that to the people. And God is making you a, 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 I do a, a team player. He is placing you with a team. And, and, and you're going to play your part. You're going to play your position. You're not going to get out of sorts. But you're going to be in tune with the team. You're going to move with the team. For you, a couple of you guys will be pillars in this church. And a woman of God, you, are, you, you do have a love in you. But there is something else in you as well. You're just not coming alongside, but there is there is a teaching on you as well. And I see you going being with a group of women in this church. And you guys are gonna love other young ladies in this church. And you're gonna love the ladies in this city. And you're gonna move in love. And I just see, I see hurting young ladies that you're loving on them. And you're loving them back to the kingdom of God. I see you guys are just giving people hope again. For people with lost hope. But you're going to give hope again in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. And I do agree with the more like, God is like saying, what, what do you guys want? Do you want more of me? Do you want more of me? More faith? You can have it. More grace? You can have it. More wisdom? You can have it. What? You can have it. You want, to, you want to see the healing? You can have it. Come on, you want to prophesy? You can do it. He's not holding anything back from you. See, God is giving you a, he's placed a table in front of you. And he's like, come on, gorge yourself on this meal. Gorge yourself on me. What more do you want from me? You can have it. I will not hold back for I love you. And God is so proud of you. He is excited about you. He's more excited about you than you can ever imagine. He smiles over you. He's prayed for you. He intercedes for you. He loves you. And he's not holding you back. Hallelujah. strongly that uh, what uh, Pastor David ministered to also earlier about a word of uh, being, being a knowledgeable man, a spirit of knowledge, a spirit of wisdom to come over me. And the, the word that keeps coming to me as I'm sitting here is that it, it, the word is counselor. And I don't see it in the framework of a counsel, you know, counseling kind of thing. I see it as a counselor to this house. 
man that has the ability to bring good counsel, and good wisdom, and good thinking into the house. And I believe in the days ahead, God's going to raise you up in a way that you can't believe possible. Because he's going to raise you up and make you a counselor in this house. When people turn to you for counsel, when the leadership turns to you for counsel, you're going to have the right word. You're going to have the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of wisdom on you in a way that you're going to bring good counsel to every decision, everything that's being uh, uh, confronted to this house. Every time a change is necessary, every time a, a pressure point comes, you're going to have the word of wisdom. You're going to have the word of knowledge in you. You're going to give it out. It's going to be like a prophetic word in you. God's going to use you guys in a great way that way. I, I agree with this. It's a, you're a pillars in the house that we, I think all of us hesitate to name, you know, titles and everything like that out of this, not our place. But boy, we do see just a prophetic uh, uh, anointing on your guys' lives going forward. And you are going to be a part of this team here in a great way. Make no mistake about that. Make no mistake about that. You know, you know. I really felt, and I feel now that this whole prophetic mantle is yeah. something that grows on you. It's not something that you start out people hear the word prophet, they want to back off from it, and they're a little afraid of it. But I believe that by putting you, that mantle upon you, 